All right, I uh, know that we are a little tight on time, so I'm going to be really brief. Uh, the first thing I would tell you that is exciting to me is the amount of competition at every position that we have uh, currently with uh, our team. And that's always a good thing. And I think when you <clears throat> start having difficulty telling your twos from your ones, uh, you got a shot at having a good football team. Uh, our team came back in better shape uh, than maybe we expected. Uh, we still got a ways to go there. But a week into camp, their spirit, their willingness to work, uh, and there's no question in my mind we're ahead of where we've been. Uh, those, those previous 12 walkthroughs and the amount of meetings that we've been able to have virtually have really helped this football team. It's actually helped even our freshmen. And so I, I think we're, we're well down the road compared to where we've been. We're just trying to be smart with a little lengthier camp as to how we practice. But I'm excited, looking forward to the challenges. I know our team is as well, and I'll go ahead and take your questions. All right, thank you, Coach. Uh, Mike, we'll let your bat lead off today. Hey, Coach, thanks for joining us. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball over this past week, I know you're high on Jack Wallabaugh, but what has stood out to you on the offensive side? Well, I think a number of things. Certainly, um, our backs have gotten off to a, a great start. I think Dion and uh, Mateo particularly are practicing at a high level. We're not real deep right there, but Jordan Waters right now has is, is, is done really well. I'm, I'm thrilled with that. Our tight ends, starting with Noah Gray, uh, without question, um, a talented playmaker. And then I'm, I'm excited about the offensive line. We've already made uh, progress under Greg Fry. Um, you mentioned Jack, uh, but we, we've got Jacob Monk and uh, others competing at a high level. Uh, Casey Holman. Um, you know, across the board, as I said, there is extreme competition in all of the positions in the offensive line is one of those areas. Our receivers, um, you know, Damon, um, our starters are Jake Bobo right now. Damon and Jalen Calhoun, um, I think the competition they're feeling is going to do nothing but make us better. And in the quarterback position, we're playing pretty well. We're, we're, we're working three guys. Chris Katrinik is running with the ones, and then Gunner uh, Holmberg and Chase Bryce are, are working reps intermittently uh, after that. So real pleased with where we are offensively. Well, I mean, yeah, coach would have a preference of going oh, – oh, if you ended up losing a season, you would certainly want to look at being able to go above 85 with commitments you already have, seniors that may or may not return. It's a complex issue. I do think the simplest approach to begin with, we, we've asked a couple of times for the oversight committee to consider taking the four-game redshirt rule to six – uh, which would handle some of those circumstances. But, you know, I, I say this all the time, it's 2020. Uh, who, who knows? It's so different what's going to come out of this. Uh, and I know that we, we, we're going to do what we can. You know, no question here and across the board, I would think, collegiately to help student athletes through a very difficult time. Well, he is a, he's got great arm talent. He's a natural thrower. His accuracy level is really high. He's got a great football IQ and an understanding. You know, he's still obviously learning a system. Uh, it's tough, 
you know, as a quarterback, uh, you know, we did get the benefit of some Zoom meetings, but not not what the other guys got all through the spring because he was still in the process of trying to graduate. So he's catching up. What I would tell you is he's getting more comfortable with what we're doing, more comfortable with the passing game every day. But he he's a really good football player, and it's important to him. That's a great question because I, I mean, it'd be real easy for me to say all of them. Um, they're having fun. Uh, they're having fun uh, practicing. Uh, Mark Gilbert is back full speed. Um, he obviously is inspirational as a veteran player. Marquise Waters is just, he and Michael Carter in a safety combination are pretty darn special. Lummy Young, Jamart Woods, uh, the whole group, Leonard uh, Johnson, Josh Blackwell. Um, we're getting Jeremiah Lewis back. He's been out just a little while. Uh, a lot of young talent there. I'm excited about that. We're not as deep at safety as we would like to be. So there's some young player opportunity there. Uh, as always, some of our young guys are, you know, sore hamstrings, sore quads. We've got to get through that to continue our evaluation. But it's a fun group to watch work in the, in the secondary right now. And what it's been good for us is that they've taken young receivers and challenged them. And I've watched us get better at receiver because of the quality and the talent that we have in the secondary. All right, let's go to Jim Sumner. Can you hear me this time? I got you, Jim. You know, I, I think it's really difficult to say. I'm very proud of our players, and a very difficult circumstance across the country is going to be the fact when students come back on campus, uh, you're not going to live as you once have. I mean, college students are college students. They're very social, but it's 2020. And so for, you know, contact tracing in, in a football game could be a nightmare. Everybody has to be obviously aware of that. So at this point, I think the focus is on mitigation uh, and, and the bubble, so to speak. We don't have near the same circumstance that an NBA uh, team has, but I think our players are very w aware of what their responsibilities are to each other as is our staff. So I, 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 I'm in my heart of hearts believe we can play 11 games um, and we're going to get it done. I feel really good about that. but. You know, I can't speak for anyone else because I don't see what the day-to-day -day operation is. And we've been testing twice a week, um, and our guys have done a great job. You know, it's just been really, really fun to be with them. Um, that is a great question, and in the subject you're bringing up, to be honest with you, is bothering me personally. Um, I, um, I was hoping at the beginning of this thing, I had great hope when we were having the American Football Coaches Association board meetings and were in communication with some folks with the NCAA, is that we would get uh, a uni unified approach uh, I felt like from the beginning that that was going to be necessary. I do have a fear of never seeing college football be uh, the same. And, um, you know, it's, it's just a unique 
time, and I realize it's 2020 and we can always recover from this, but I think each of us in, in, in this, first of all, with the players, and secondly, the game itself, and then thirdly, certainly our profession, uh, being professional. Uh, I, I just um, I hope the leaders or the people that are involved with these very difficult decisions, and I hope uh, coaches and players alike are, are, can find a, some, some common ground to, to make this work. But what you brought up is one of my gravest concerns of one group going one way, one group going the other. What, what are we going to see uh, in the future? And, uh, you know, I, 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 can't, I, I can't even fathom it, but I don't see how we could, could be the same. I will say that. It's, it's a little frightening to me because, um, you know, I, I love college football. I have all my life. And uh, I certainly don't want to see any drastic changes to our great game. It's a great form of amateur football. It's provided a platform for a lot of great young men, both educationally, uh, athletically. We're, I guess we're the cheapest uh, minor leagues for any major sport. You know, the NFL doesn't have to fund us. So it's, it's provided a lot of things for a lot of people. And I think our leadership really needs to step up at this time. Well, you know, I guess you could have multiple uh, national champions. We've seen that in the past. I think you got to, you know, you got to, there has to be a carrot. If, if this is going to continue as is, uh, there's got to be a carrot for a team to play. And it's not that much different when, when I was young, when we had the AP, the UPI, uh, you know, all of these different national championship teams. And, um, you know, may, maybe that's okay. So we probably just, you know, need, need to play and declare a champion of whoever is playing. But, yeah, call it a national championship, whoever could do it. And whether we continue this path in the fall or the spring is, is obviously got an outstanding team and worthy of being called a champion. We are, um, we, we've talked about it a lot uh, from a standpoint in, in our board meetings as, as trustees. We've talked about it within the ACC. Uh, there's no magic number, uh, but you get close to, uh, you got to have eight offensive linemen, but you can also look at some potential two-way play. It's got to be done safely. But eight offensive linemen, kind of the number for me has been 47, 48, where you're too deep, hopefully, on both sides of the ball, and you have your specialist, a snapper, place kicker, punter. Um, we're, we're practicing really focused on our entire team uh, because you could get short. Um, we don't know who we're going to necessarily play with. I think one of the more unique stories that you guys could look at is that um, when, when you're doing the COVID testing, you're practicing for an opponent, and then all of a sudden midweek, an opponent you're going to play has to opt out of that week and you're suddenly finding yourself maybe on Thursday, Friday playing someone else. Um, so uh, we've given that some thought as we've gone through as to how we're approaching putting our offense and defense together, the, the strategy, the X's and O's, as well as the kicking game. So from a coaching standpoint, the strategy, it's a unique challenge and we're trying to give it a little bit of a unique perspective. And, you know, I want all our young people to believe that they matter anyway, but certainly everybody matters right now. Their progress and their development is important to our program.